fire started in the early hours of the morning. Um, there will be a minute of silence at noon tomorrow, so I won't ask us to do that. But I did write a long poem about Grenfell Tower. Um, after I visited, I felt that I was, you know, like everyone, um, I was just completely uh, absorbed in, in, in the media uh, coverage of the event, and I wanted to make it just a little bit more real for me. I was on crutches at the time because I'd broken my ankle right after recovering from cancer treatment. I was racing around in such <laughs> delirious joy that I tripped off my bike and broke my ankle. So this is called Going on Crutches to Grenfell Tower. <coughs> after Ben Ockrey, um, the poet who I think you probably would have seen his um, phenomenal kind of homage to, to Grenfell Tower and the people who died and the people who, who survived. So the refrain is the line from Ben Ockrey's poem. If you want to see how the poor die, come see Grenfell Tower. A Nigerian summons me to London from the sea. A Palestinian gives me directions from the south bank of the river. As I hesitate at the head of a plummeting escalator, two sharp-suited businessmen turn to help me descend into the underground. It's rush hour and the carriages are crammed. Boarding the train, I shrug off my backpack, tuck it with the crutches <coughs> close to my body, grab the overhead rail, realizing too late. All this is difficult, strains my weak arm. As the force of the train rocks through me, an Irishman asks if I need any help. I'm okay, I say, and lurch against the door. Quietly, in a gesture that reminds me of the formal way South Koreans offer money, he grips my elbow, holds my arm between Waterloo and Westminster. To keep him upright, he laughs before he hops off, and I take his place by the plexiglass partition. Will someone give this lady a seat, a man asks. Not a single person looks up. Only one of my fellow passengers is asleep. Charming, I murmur. The man repeats his question and a woman stands without a word or a glance. I sit. I have taken her seat, her prized rush hour seat, but I needed to sit. I felt unsafe on my feet. If you want to see how the poor die, come see Grenfell Tower. At Baker Street Station it strikes me that heeding the call of the poet wasn't perhaps such a great idea. As I teeter down a flight of stairs, a train arrives at the platform below, and a flood of humanity rises toward me, filling the stairwell, one solid mass I can't thread my way through or bypass. Neither can I turn round and go back. I have to wait on the step as people push past me. I feel guilty for waiting, for taking up space, for taking up time. I feel stupid for thinking I could cross London on crutches. I shouldn't have come. I'm no biblical cripple. I'm not journeying to meet Christ. I don't need to be another Grenfell Gawker. I need step-free access and a train home to Brighton. But just as I realize how foolish I've been, I see that a small miracle is occurring. People have noticed me, are pressing closer together, and a path has appeared, a narrow shining hemline along the edge of the stairs, hugging the wall. I stepped down to the platform, as the physiotherapist taught me, good foot to heaven, bad foot to hell. On the circle line, a petite black woman smiles, jumps up, insists I sit, tells me about her corrected fourth toe. She disembarks at Royal Oak and a couple from Colorado get on. The woman looks at my big form foot boot, laughs, asks, how long do you have to go? And before I know it, the train isn't underground anymore. We are rushing over grey streets and grey parks and council estates beneath a dull white sky. And then we are there at Latimer Road. And before the train is even pulled into the station, it is there too. Right there, through the window, watching us with its hundreds of burned out eyes. Watching us go on with our lives. Will we speed through its shadow? <coughs> or step into its radius, to enter a crime scene, to come home to a war zone, or to make an unsteady pilgrimage to a place we would normally zoom past. If you want to see how the poor die, 
come see Grenfell Tower. They greet me at the turnstiles. Their faces are everywhere, from walls, church railings, shop windows, telephone kiosks, above the stiff queues of flowers, the perfume of stargazers and rot. Their beauty radiates an intolerable heat. A curly-haired girl on the cusp of her womanhood, the honey-skinned mother and her five-year-old daughter, the Muslim couple and their baby, the two young Italians, women in bright sweaters, bold prints, smiles and hijabs, older men clad in dignified solitude, Stephen, also known as Steve, Mohammed from Syria, please sign the petition, poster after poster, please call, if you see, and behind the telephone kiosk, that plastered pillar of love with its poems and prayer calls and white paper butterflies, behind the viaduct with its incessant trains, behind the vinyl banner on the brick-clad new build, considerate constructors secure everyone's safety. It rises. The blackness. <coughs> the blackness I have hobbled here to stare at, as if nothing else existed. The blackness I will never forget, for there is nothing blacker than the windows of Grenfell Tower. Not the niqab of the young woman at the zebra crossing, whose dark, darting eyes are the essence of light. Not the black plastic boot that protects my shattered ankle. Not the black shell of my laptop on which I'm writing this poem, or the fascia of my Blackberry phone on which I took grainy photos of the burned out windows of Grenfell Tower. Photos that fail to show those windows as they are. Blackness as void cosmic blackness, the unfathomable blackness we come from and return to, absolute blackness, cordoned off by red and white ribbons, guarded from gawpers, by police in fluorescent jackets, but impossible to cover up, impossible to hide, yet impossible to approach, until a man strides by me, stops up ahead on the pavement, and raises his arms. Pale, gray-haired in a gray shirt, his arms lifted to the tower in an open-palmed V for veneration. He appears to be praying, mourning, giving healing, sending love to Grenfell Tower, communing with the spirits, he tells me, of his neighbors who went to school with his children who didn't want to leave this way, <clears throat> whose agony lodges in his throat, whose vanished beauty shines from his eyes as he turns to go back home. If you want to see how the poor die, come see Grenfell Tower. Yes, Grenfell Tower is a mass grave, a mausoleum, a crematorium, it commands our silence, but go and see it. Go and see Britain's black omphalos, the navel of our failure to take care of each other. Go and see London's real Olympic torch, our charred trophy of arrogance, greed and contempt, a monument to everything this country's leaders do best, scoffing at basic safety procedures, flouting regulations, ignoring experts' advice, cutting corners, padding bank accounts, promising improvements, delivering death traps, telling critics to get stuffed, never consulting, never respecting the people they are paid to represent, people deemed a nuisance and an eyesore, a blight on property values, a threat to social order, whose lives are not worth the paper their missing posters are printed on whose inevitable incineration has been planned, approved, and fully costed, 
whose grief and rage and anguish must be micromanaged with a drip feed of numbers, a narrowing of remits, a stealthy adjournment of truth. But the truth cannot be hidden. The truth is there for all to see. Yes, go see Grenfell Tower. Go by tube, bus, car, taxi, bicycle, wheelchair, skateboard, rollerblades, tap the pavement with white canes with crutches. Go and see it. Don't take a selfie. Take flowers, food, and clothes. Leave a message at St. Clement's. Go and see Kensington's anti carbor its site of sacred devastation, rising in every direction we face. And if you cannot go, wherever you may be, however frail or far, let us all in our hearts stand with the disappeared and the survivors. Let us stand with the uncounted, <coughs> the discounted, at the top of the stairs on the 24th floor. Let us demand those responsible for this preventable inferno. Stop their frantic climbing over Grenfell's broken bodies, through Grenfell's Tower of Ashes, over stacks of contracts, legal documents, to a safety and freedom they do not deserve. As the faces of the missing fade into flickers of memory, by the candles of our witness, let us light a clear, broad path to justice on the street with its hundreds of burnt out eyes from its unfathomable void. Grenfell Tower is watching us. We cannot fail again. Mm.